Welcome to Market Meeting Live Stock Analysis and Q&A, 31st July 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In this session, I will use Q systems primarily for bottom up analysis. Sometimes I may also carry out top down and inside based identification of trade opportunities. QA is throughout the session. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. Let's begin our study of the global markets using AXJO, that is the Australian index. I'm going to open that with standard at a glance template, that is the weekly and daily chart template. I call it at a glance because this template can help me decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds provided the chart can load in a few seconds. Okay, let me go to CSI 300, China index. Not friendly today. What about CSI 500? Better luck. Okay. CSI 500, the China market index. In the last market meet, I mentioned that it was moving sideways. CSI 300 was inside a triangle pattern. It is still inside a triangle pattern, and CSI 500 is moving sideways. The weekly backdrop color is neutral, the candle shapes are also neutral. In the daily, it is not moving with any clear direction. This may be the time to stay away from the market. Let's try AXGO one more time. Okay, good. Australian market index AXGO, we can see it is much stronger than the CSI 300 or 500 index. In the weekly, it is in an uptrend. This week's candle shape is bearish with long upper tail. The color is neutral. In the daily, it is going in an uptrend. Price is supported by memory trend line support. There is a pair release signal. That is fine. It is in an uptrend. It is at the upper boundary level, so we are not going to take any long now, and it is in an uptrend, so we are not going to take any short trend. What about Hong Kong market? Hong Kong market in the weekly chart, dot HSI, Hang Seng Index, is inside the triangle pattern. The backdrop candle color turned magenta one week ago. That was bearish and this week it dropped. In the daily chart, it is having a downtrend line, memory resistance line and also a memory support line. White triangle pattern. It is near the lower boundary level. We are not going to take any short trade right now. It is oversold as shown by the stretch band indicator. And it is not having any clear direction, certainly not in an uptrend. 
weekly is also bearish color so we are not going to look for any long trade china market was directionless one week ago australia was bullish the same is continuing india was weak one week earlier let's see how it is today After displaying the bearish headwind in the weekly and also bearish headwind in the daily, prices dropped significantly. The weekly backdrop color remains bearish, magenta. In the daily, price dropped below the lower boundary level. It is oversold for quite a large number of days. It is too late to short it. I had Analyzed it earlier and mentioned on this day we had the trend following go with flow short trade setup. Partial profit would be booked at the lower boundary level and partial position may continue to be held even now. We are not going to enter any short trade right now and it is bearish, so we are not going to take any long trade also. FTSE market. UK market FTSE index. Let me try to reopen it. Okay. In the weekly, the candle color is bullish. Though the candle shape is mixed. Hollow means bullish, but upper tail means bearish. So we can say the candle shape is mixed this week. In the daily, it was moving sideways. Then on this candle, it broke out of the watermark resistance level, but price was already at the upper boundary level. So we were not going to take any long trade at that time. Now price has pulled back below the watermark level creating a false upside breakout if now price can go up and gives a cyan color candle that will give a trend following go with flow long trade setup and this may be one example where irrespective of the apparent negative news about the uk market about gbp dropping if we see that the FTSE index is giving a trend following long setup, a Q trader will take that setup either in FTSE itself or in one of the constituent stocks that is fundamentally strong. Right now, there is no trade setup, but you may keep an eye for a possible go with flow long trade setup in coming days. Let's look at the US futures. E mini S&P 500 future, ES. In the weekly, there was a bearish headwind some days ago. And this week is displaying another bearish headwind. We need to see if the bearish headwind stays at the end of the current week. Daily also had a bearish headwind. Since then, it is not going up. It is continuing in an uptrend. Price is supported by memory support. In the last webinar also I mentioned, if the memory support lines are broken, then we may be careful about the long positions we are holding. Right now it is in an uptrend, but the weekly is neutral color, daily is neutral color. There is no trade setup at present. NASDAQ, futures, NQ. This also displayed a bearish headwind earlier and around the same price level, a bearish headwind appeared long time ago. This week's candle color is yellow shape is indecisive in the daily for four or five days price is not moving in any direction price is in an uptrend because price is supported by memory support again until the memory support is broken we have to conclude that nq is also in an uptrend like 
E S Dow Jones futures Y M. I mentioned earlier this was the future that didn't have any bearish headwind in the weekly chart and in daily the one that was there price broke above it showing that ym was stronger than nq and es now it has a memory resistance line also price is still in an uptrend if price can break above the memory resistance line that me that may be an opportunity to take a long position if not in ym which may be too close to the upper boundary by that time in one of the constituent stocks. The last future that we study is RTY. In the weekend market roundup, I mentioned that it was inside the triangle pattern. It was inside the triangle pattern for four weeks. One, two, three, and four. This week, it seems to be breaking out of the triangle pattern. If that happens, then RTY will end with a bullish connotation at the end of the week. We have to see how it closes on Friday. Right now in the daily, it is moving sideways, slightly going up with a slight slope, going up with a slight slope, but not in a clear uptrend. We may wait to see how the market moves this way. Especially there is a red trade, not red, especially there is a Fed red decision today. Sometimes market doesn't move much, but sometimes once in a while market may move significantly because of the Fed red announcement. If you are planning to enter a new trade, it may be wiser to wait for the Fed rate announcement, not enter any new trade today, and look at the market, how it goes today, enter the new trade tomorrow. Those were reviews of the global market futures as well as USA market futures. Let me share some of the stocks that I identified using sonar scan. Give me a minute, please. Okay, I took one minute to find out the stocks that I studied. These are DHI, WLL, and CLF. Let me put them in the sonar. And you will see there are several indications in favor of each of these stocks. However, they are in different kinds of setup. Let's start with DHI. It is at pendulum high in an uptrend. The D line, D indicator is showing that. If we look at the chart, it is breaking out of the memory resistance in both weekly and daily. Weekly backdrop color is bullish, shape is pretty bullish. In the daily also, the color and shape both are bullish. It broke out of the memory resistance with extreme bullish pressure and very high activity. This was moving in a sideways pattern 
in a triangle pattern and broke out yesterday. This may be a breakout trade candidate. Normally, we would like to look at the fundamental also. I will do that shortly. Let me look at the other two stocks. Before looking at the next stock, how did I find this stock? I found this stock from the sonar because it was shown as a breakout candidate, go with flow candidate, as well as a candidate with extreme pressure. Right now, if you see the sonar is not showing those, it is not showing the GWF column lit up, neither is it showing the pressure column lit up or breakout column lit up. That is because stress station is already calculating for the current day today. The signals came yesterday. Now in the morning session, the signals are reset. If you looked at the scan, then you will still find the stocks. If you ran go with flow long, if the HI is in this list, the list on which the scan was run, then you will find the HI in the scan list, but not in the sonar list because sonar is already calculating for today. So DHI had a breakout long trade setup with high pressure and WLL, but DHI was at pendulum high and see WLL is at pendulum low and it is in a downtrend. They are very different trade setups. Let's look at the chart. This is also breaking out of weekly trend line and also broke out of several daily trend lines. There was a bullish headwind at the same price level earlier that created watermark level in the weekly that has not been regained yet. If price can gain that watermark support, then it will create a false downside breakout in weekly. In the daily also, there was a bullish headwind at the same price level that created a watermark support price tried to go below that and regain that level. Therefore, daily has already created a false downside breakout. If the daily memory resistance was not there, the last one, then one could consider taking a long position yesterday itself near market close. For DHI, one could take the long trade yesterday itself. DHI, if I revisit the stock there is no nearby resistance if one is a breakout trader then dhi also gave a breakout long trade setup the difference between dhi and wll is that dhi is at pendulum high price extreme high and wll is at price extreme low so we could find stocks at different price levels using q sonar and you see CLF is neither at price extreme high nor at price extreme low. The pendulums, pendulum cell is black. This is another kind of trade setup, all found using Q technique. And here it gave a trend following go with flow long trade setup. Weekly backdrop color is cyan, shape is also bullish. In the daily, it is going up with higher high, higher low. Yesterday, it came to the swing low and went up and gave a flow color cyan candle in the daily chart. That was meeting all the requirements of a go with flow long trade setup. I took these three examples because they all used different price levels. One at pendulum high, that was a breakout trade setup. One at pendulum low, also a breakout trade setup. And then a trend following trade setup in CLF that is neither at pendulum high nor at pendulum low in the middle of the price range. This came in sonar as a go with flow long candidate yesterday. You can use the Q sonar in different ways to find different trade setups as per your liking. You can double click on any of the columns to sort by that column, let me add the Dow Jones Industrial Average components. If I am comfortable buying stocks that are breaking out from the top, 
like the IBD kind of setup, then I will sort by pendulum and focus on the stocks that are at price extreme high. If I am looking for bottom catching stocks, then I will reverse sort and look for stocks like BFE, Pfizer, that is at pendulum low. And if I am looking for stocks that have started to move from the bottom but have not reached the pendulum high yet, then I will look for the stocks that are having black color, that is no color under pendulum column. And then I will look for a possible trade setup. Let me now look at some of the stocks that I discussed in the forum. I analyzed two stocks, CMI and OSK, 16 days ago. I submitted a post querying which stock is stronger. On the left hand side is CMI weekly chart, on the right hand side is OSK weekly chart, both in the same industry. And weekly chart had a, you can see, very headwind in CMI. Later on, I commented in the follow up post that because the very headwind was there in CMI, we were not going to consider any long trade. OSK didn't have any weekly bearish headwind. However, OSK had a daily bearish headwind. If you see the CMI chart here, it had a weekly bearish headwind. I posted the original chain here on this week and since then price has not been able to go up. That is CMI. Therefore, avoiding taking a long trade based on the bearish headwind was the right choice. What about OSK? I posted the original chain here. That time the weekly was bullish. However, daily had a bearish headwind at the same price level. Therefore, the post was on this day, the original post, but looking at the bearish headwind to the left, we would not take a long trade. That was also the right choice because it didn't go up. Where are we going to take a short trade in OSK or CMI? Probably no, because the fundamentals might have been strong and the industry was also strong. Both belong to the same industry. That is how we can use the headwind signal to stay away from entering new trade. Let's look at another post in the forum that was about a stock that I was watching in the India market, STTE. And I mentioned that when I'm looking for bottom catching stocks, this is the kind of pattern that I like. STTE, Starlight Technologies, it belongs to communications equipment industry in India. The industry was strong at that time. It was a value stock and it had nice earnings growth as well. Earnings quality was robust. Then I looked at the chart in the weekly, it was at memory support, but also at memory resistance. Same was true for daily, it was inside a triangle pattern. So my conclusion was if it breaks out of the triangle pattern in daily, then I could take a long trade or I would wait for price to come back to the lower memory support line and see price, see if price is bouncing from there. What happened after that? It didn't go up. We can see here the memory resistance in the follow up chart. I can see that it is still holding. Therefore, I didn't take a long trade. This is an important point. The breakout trade setup is confirmed only if the memory resistance is broken, not in anticipation of a breakout. Often that doesn't work. Therefore, it was the right decision to keep the short in watch list, however, not take the trade because the memory was not broken. Now, one may see if it is coming to the next memory support 120 and bounces from there. That will be a new trade setup, maybe a bounce trade setup, not a breakout trade setup anymore. Let's look at another stock. 
ALGN. I think I shared it in Twitter. No, let, let me explain what I wanted to share. ALGN, if that is the right ticker. Yes. ALGN had a massive drop on this day after earnings. And that time there was a memory support line in the daily as well as in the weekly. And I posted the question that looking at the existing memory support line, how could it help your trading decision? Now price in this case came to the memory support and then dropped below that. Therefore, we didn't have any bounce long trade setup. If the memory support held and price could go up from there, then we could take a bounce long trade setup. In this case, even more confidently because price also would be bouncing from a very long term weekly memory support line. However, that didn't happen. I kept an eye on it, but the bounce setup didn't confirm. Therefore, I didn't take any trade. Another way the existence of the memory trend line could help you was to not short the stock after this huge drop. Even if it was going below the low of the gap down candle, looking at the daily support, memory support and weekly memory support, in this case, we would not like to take a trade following the concept of, maybe you can say shortable gap down, reverse of the concept of Bible gap up. That means if a stock gap up a lot and then it came near a memory resistance, if the opposite thing happened, if the stock went up, came to a memory resistance, even if the concept of Bible gap up is otherwise applicable, it would be wise not to take the trade at that point. Instead, to wait for price to go up, come back down, go up again, giving a proper trend following long trade. That is one scenario where even if other conditions of Bible gap up trade setup are fulfilled, you may avoid taking a Bible gap up trade. In this case, we would not take a short trade because price came to the memory support. There was no bounce trade setup. We didn't take any long trade. However, we wouldn't take any short trade either. Let me look at another stock that I posted in Twitter. I thought very interesting. This is a stock, Wilmar International. It's a palm oil company. Their main revenue comes from palm oils. That's not considered a growth area, growth stock. However, see how the stock gain almost in a straight line. After displaying multiple bullish headwind signals, the diamond signals, it went up almost in a straight line. In the weekly, there was a bull release signal. The candle color changed from magenta to cyan when price came to the yellow direction line. That was the time that daily came to the white direction line and it went up in almost a straight line. This was a value stock and is still a value stock. So one could take a position either as a swing long trade or a long term investment. That turned out to be very profitable. There are other stocks that are not considered growth stocks that go up. For example, CMDG. This is also in Singapore. The concepts are applicable to any country. Here also, it didn't go up in a straight line, but in the weekly, we can see it had a solid run. They are a taxi operator. In spite of huge competition from Uber or Grab, Grab is another company like Uber in Asia. In spite of the competition, the stock gained quite a lot from around 2.1 to 
2.9 that's almost 40 percent plus gain so it is not that stocks have to be only in high flying tech industries to gain substantially if the stock is a value stock and cmdg was also a value stock one could take a trade using proper trade setup and book probably partial profit along the way and hold on to the remaining position looking at this stock at the right edge i can see that weekly displayed a bearish headwind daily displayed a bearish headwind at the very top looking at the daily headwind as per our normal practice one would put a trailing stop the trailing stop would probably hit somewhere here so one would save from this further down move after that now it is having magenta color in both daily weekly it is not the time to re-enter the stock if we have a long setup in subsequent days we will be able to buy it at a lower price probably at this memory support level around 250 or 240 that may be the next possible buy point however you don't buy when price is dropping we will wait for the proper setup to appear I shared three stocks, DHI, WLL, CLF. Let's have a look at their fundamentals. I should click this button. It is retrieving data about the three stocks. Again, these three stocks had very different setups. One is at pendulum high breaking out. One is at pendulum low, also breaking out of memory resistance. And the third one is giving a trend following going through a long trade setup while in the middle of the price range. Sometimes if server error comes, that is from Refinitive Zenith, then we need to click the pause button and play it again to connect with definitive once more now we can see clf and dhi they're not undervalued not overvalued clf has nice earnings growth in the last two yearly periods quarterly periods have positive earnings growth but declining dhi also has positive yearly earnings growth for last three years accelerating earnings growth from 24 percent to 26.8 to 37.5 percent so DHI and CLF could be bought as earnings growth stocks because the yearly earnings are going up. And WLL, which is at price extreme low, could be bought as a value stock. Under value stock, the valuation is in cyan color. We can see it is 16% above 52 week high, whereas the other two stocks are 43 and 51 percent above 52 week high respectively so these stocks had fundamental factors also in favor of them to consider taking a long trade the last step would be to check their industries let me do that for one of the stocks at least let's look at wll wll is in energy sector and oil and ex gas exploration and production the sector was very weak recently. Let's see how it ended yesterday. Let's go to the sector scorecard. Energy, we can see over two day period and one day period from being the worst performer. Energy switched to become the best performer. If I open the acceleration columns, then we can see over two period it is showing rapid acceleration also the best accelerating sector let's drill down oil and gas exploration of production isn't it yes wll is in oil and gas exploration and production and see how beautifully this industry is also gaining strength it was one of the worst performers not so long ago with a score of four now it is one of the best performers looking at this acceleration and gaining of strength the sign color in the heat map for industry and sector and then looking at the valuation 
optimal valuation that is undervalued stock WLL and then finally looking at the technical charts one could take a, one could take a very low risk entry in WLL yesterday. There was a memory resistance just above the closing price therefore one would not take a long trade yesterday at market close but one might wait to for today. Today, if one sees the price is going up using real time fine tuning chart, one may consider taking a very low risk entry in WLL in the long direction. However, as I mentioned, there is a Fed rate decision at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. One may consider waiting for that. If you are taking a long trade before that, like in WLL, you may watch it carefully and see after fed rate is it suddenly reversing direction or not that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session one one thing to note next week i have shifted the time for this live market meeting to 11.30, I think 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me see if people from other cities, maybe from the USA West Coast can also join. That is why I'm trying the new timing for next week. Thank you once again. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.